everyone. So for today's video, we wanted to talk about a topic that's super important for training and for assessing machine learning models, overfitting and underfitting. So now I'm going to call Natalie to see what she has to say about this. Hello. Hi, how's it going? Pretty good. How are you? I'm pretty good too. So we're going to talk about overfitting and underfitting, right? That's the plan. So where should we start? Well, I know a fun story that I think gets the high level idea across for overfitting. Many, many decades ago, when machine learning and artificial intelligence were just starting to be researched, the US wanted to use ML technology to tell pictures of Russian tanks apart from American tanks. And they poured millions of dollars into a special program. For their training data, they had people go into Russian territory under the cover of night and take lots of pictures of Russian tanks. And they were able to get pictures of American tanks pretty easily. The researchers fed these two classes of photos as training data into their machine learning algorithm. After many weeks of training, since back then computers were very slow, the researchers were happy to report that their algorithm was able to differentiate American tanks from Russian tanks with over 95% accuracy. However, when the algorithm was actually deployed in the field, it completely failed. People noticed that the algorithm would label all tanks seen at night as Russian tanks, and all tanks seen during the daytime as American tanks. It turns out that all of the pictures of Russian tanks used during training were taken at night or in low visibility conditions because that was when US spies were able to sneak in to get pictures, but the photos of American tanks were all taken in brightly lit rooms or during the day. So instead of learning the different features of American versus Russian tanks like the researchers had intended, the ML algorithm instead learned the difference between night and day. There are many different versions of the story and it's mostly regarded as a folktale, but it's commonly known as the Russian tank parable. And it's a great example of how overfitting and machine learning can lead to huge real life consequences. Yeah, that's a great example. Thanks for telling it. What do you think are some important things to consider when building out ML models with respect to overfitting and underfitting? Good question. Let's say you're trying to fit a function to a set of points. Usually more complicated functions can hit more points. So you could get some really strange curvy function to go through all of the points. This allows you to do as well as possible with all of the points that are already there, but when a new point appears, you might miss it by a lot. Or you could use a less complex function, but miss a couple of points. In this case, you sacrifice some performance on the existing points, but you're much more likely to generalize well to new data. Does this always mean that simpler functions are better? Well, not necessarily. If we tried to fit these points with one of the simplest functions, a straight line, that would also generalize poorly. The first case is an example of overfitting, while the last is an example of underfitting. Effective models fall in the middle ground between the two. So basically, in machine learning, overfitting refers to an algorithm that is too specific to a limited set of data points, and underfitting refers to an algorithm that's not specific enough, and both of them can lead to worse performance. Right. Over and underfitting are two common pitfalls that probably all machine learning developers face at some point. Maybe we should talk a bit about how to detect when it happens and maybe even some ways to fix it. Yeah, so to start, let's talk about the data that's used to train a model and how that could have a huge impact on potential overfitting or underfitting. So in, our, um, in one of our previous videos, we talked about how algorithms are typically built using a portion of the data called the training set. The training set is a limited portion of the real examples that the model will see in the real world. So problems could come up if it fits too closely to this data, and then it can't extrapolate well, which would be an example of overfitting. Or if it isn't trained enough and learns too general of a function, which would be underfitting. So clearly these are problems, but let's say you're building a machine learning system. How would you keep an eye out for overfitting and underfitting? Yeah, that's a great question. It's usually pretty easy to tell when your algorithm is underfitting when you see that it has a very low accuracy on the training set. 
Detecting overfitting is less straightforward, but one way is to set aside another portion of the data called the validation set. This is not used to train the model, but every once in a while during the training process, you can check your algorithm's performance on this other data. A sign of overfitting is if your model has good performance on the training set, but does significantly worse on the validation set. This usually means that you've learned a really good function on the training set, but it's too specific and doesn't carry over to data the model hasn't seen before, like in the validation set. That's a great point. Although sometimes using a validation data set might not always catch overfitting if it's limited in the same ways as the training data. So for example, in the Russian tank parable, if the researchers set aside a portion of their data for validation, it would still have that same problem of only showing American tanks during the daytime and Russian tanks at night. Right, this definitely isn't an easy problem with very clear-cut solutions. How about we each investigate and report back on some practical ways to avoid overfitting and underfitting? Great idea. Okay, I'm gonna get to it. I'll talk to you soon. All right, see you. Okay, so for underfitting, this is usually solved just by training your algorithm for longer or by choosing a more complex model. Overfitting, on the other hand, is much harder to detect and avoid. One way to keep tabs on and try to prevent overfitting is this thing called early stopping. So we talked about the use of a validation set earlier and how good training performance but bad validation performance is typically a sign of overfitting. Usually the performance on the training and validation set will look like this over the course of training a model. First, they'll both start out pretty badly before the model has really fit to anything. As the model begins to fit to the training data, the performance on the training set will improve. The performance on the validation set will also get better as your model learns about the data. If you continue training, there might come a point where the training set performance plateaus, which means you've learned as much as possible from the training set. During this whole training process, you might see your validation accuracy stop increasing while your training accuracy goes up. Or your validation accuracy could even decrease. Both of these are indicators that now your model has started overfitting. As you can see, monitoring an algorithm's performance on the validation set is a good thing to do just to keep tabs on when your model starts to overfit. If you do this, then during training, you can also use a technique called early stopping. Early stopping means that you stop training your algorithm once your validation accuracy is no longer improving. Because at this point, you've probably stopped learning useful things about the data that will generalize, and then you'll start overfitting, so this is a good point to stop training. This is a widely used technique, but there is an important limitation here. By making decisions about the algorithm based on the validation set, for example, when to stop training, we also risk overfitting in a different way to the validation set. You might be wondering how it's possible for your algorithm to overfit on the validation data, since none of that data is directly used for training. But still, because you are using it to make decisions, the validation data set still ends up affecting your final model. Thanks, Harini. Those are some really great considerations. I found a couple of other ways to keep tabs on overfitting as well. One way is to augment your data. This is especially helpful when it's difficult to get more data or you are forced to work with a small data set. A small data set especially risks overfitting because you're less likely to have a wide enough distribution of the actual data to capture trends that are meaningful and generalizable, instead paying too much attention to little quirks in the small sample you have. Data augmentation is basically just applying various filters or image editing techniques to your pre-existing dataset to generate examples that are similar but that don't yet exist in the dataset. For example, zooming in a bit, flipping an image, rotating it, or changing the colors. The researchers from the Russian tank parable might have been able to apply brightness filters on their limited dataset to achieve better results. However, not all data augmentation techniques may be appropriate for all datasets. If applying one of the filters or image editing techniques changes the label or class of the image, you would not want to do that. 
If your dataset does not contain any data with an important feature, for example, a view of an animal from a different angle, data augmentation would probably not help with capturing these features. Also, if you're doing data augmentation, you need to be careful about only validating on the original dataset and not on the augmented dataset. This can help make sure that the techniques you used are actually suitable for helping you improve your results. And then there's regularization. Regularization is a method applied during the training process to combat overfitting. It basically involves adding a penalty for more complex functions. When you optimize a function with regularization, you're balancing between accuracy and simplicity. You can weigh both of these differently to try and find the best balance between them. In a later video, we'll talk more about the technical details behind regularization. That was a lot of fun. Yeah, and knowing about under and overfitting is super important in real life too, when developing or assessing ML algorithms. I feel like I often consider these issues when I use an ML algorithm in real life, and I notice that it's performing differently than I expected. Yeah, me too. So let's do a quick recap. Overfitting is when you learn a function that is too specific to a limited set of data. And underfitting is when the learned function is not specific enough. One way to detect under and overfitting is by tracking performances on both the training and the validation set while your model is being trained. Underfitting is usually resolved by training for longer or by using a more complex model. And there are a handful of mitigation techniques you can use to combat overfitting, including early stopping, data augmentation, and regularization. Yeah, I think that's a great summary. Thanks. Well, this was great, and I'm sure we'll talk again soon. Bye, Natalie. All right, see you.